Unfortunately, due to traffic issues and lane blockers and construction and a bit of the three is to mix together, I missed Reese Martin's introduction speech, unfortunately, but I caught the rest. What I didn't record was the uh, breakdown discussions at each and every single table. That would have been next to impossible to record. So, anyways, enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. What a nice and professional and polished video that was, yes. That's it. Okay, so uh, we are going to be moving into discussions now for the next 10 minutes. Our table facilitators will help guide you. But yeah, uh, discuss um, funding trends and service cuts, all that whatnot. Um, uh, I have an introduction as well. So my name is Oh, Kuzir. and one more thing. Yeah, sorry, the city is not here. We highly encourage you to have the time to join the table uh, just so that you can discuss with more people. But yeah, so, it's your yeah. So we just watched the, the videos interviewing the uh, candidates about especially funding models. Uh, so how about we go around the table and debate uh, and report back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose just two tables at random uh, to do a report back about what the substance of your discussion was uh, about this topic of funding the TTC. Uh, it can be the facilitator reporting, or you can nominate a sacrifice of your own choosing to, uh, to report back. I'm going to choose, again, just random, not picking on anyone, how about this table right here? Oh, do you want to come up you to the mic You can come to the mic. Yeah, so report backs will be done from the mic, and then we'll tell you what's going to happen next. We'll do these first. Um, yeah, so from our table, we uh, were discussing about the candidates and the future plans, and yeah, we all basically agreed that among the candidates, Olivia Chow, and as well as Josh Atlo, were had the best plans for like, the commercial parking levy, um, supporting it, that is, and kind of funding. However, we're also discussing the other candidates, such as Mitzi Hunter and also um, Chloe Brown, about their uh, campaigns overall. Uh, and we're also discussing what we'd like to hear more from the candidates. For example, like one of our table members were saying that they wanted to hear more about what exactly they would do with each of their um, plans, because they say, like, I'll do this, but how are they going to do that? Like, are they going to work with city council to do that? Um, but yeah, overall, we agree that Olivia Chow, as well as like Josh Matlow and Chloe Brown, have really good campaigns. That was under 60 seconds. Way to go. Great You see, it's not too bad being a sacrifice. So I am going to nominate, let's choose this table right here at the back, right by the blackboard there. You guys. Who is your sacrifice? It can be the facilitator. You, can, you have 60 seconds to report back. Okay, we also had the same conclusion about Olivia Chow and Josh Batlow had really good plans. Someone also mentioned that Missy Hunter, when she was speaking, she kind of mentioned that she wants to like not impact small businesses. So it seems like she's leaving the door open a little bit for maybe a you know commercial parking lot for just big transit or big uh, commercial. Buildings and malls. We also, you know, talked about how transit is good for a city for business as well, and that it actually like is good for small businesses and creates economic activity. We also talked about how getting from A to B with the service cuts has been so bad that it feels like it takes 40 minutes to get literally anywhere, no matter the distance. Um, yeah, and that waiting 10 minutes for a subway is just not—it's not good. It makes you not want to take transit, and we need funding to reverse that. Yeah. Thank you. Great report. Yeah. Yeah, I live on the 506 myself, and it's been cut, and it's just a complete yeah. disaster. Now I'm sure we're all feeling that in different parts of the city. So now we have a very brief period of time, about five minutes or so, for folks. Anyone doesn't have to be a report from your table. Anyone can come up to this mic and respond to what they heard about the candidates' plans, about your discussion, or what you think about uh, things to fund the TTC. And if you um, can come
come up to the table and you want us to bring the mic, just raise your hand and we'll see if we can, we can uh, bring it over to you. But uh, I see Jonah, you've got your hand up. Do you want to come over here? Oh, yeah. Is there anybody who needs the mic brought to them to make a comment? I'm just going to look for any hands if somebody wants to comment. I'm pretty mobile here at the front as well, if anyone needs it. Okay, so we're going to invite Jonah to come up first, and then if you wanted to contribute, so we've got about five minutes for open discussion, um, so come and line up behind Jonah. Jonah, come on down over here, and remember, every person has 60 seconds, because we want to make enough time for everyone, and then also move on to our next topics. Okay, Jonah, you're on the clock. All right, so I want to, first I want to specifically respond to um, the different candidates' plans, what different people thought were the different candidates' plans. So, uh, me personally, um, I, per I think uh, I do agree that uh, Josh probably is the best one in the world, but Olivia is really close. Some of the other candidates, uh, like Floyd Brown, Nancy Hunter, um, Floyd Brown, Nancy Hunter, they also have good ideas. I mean, some of them might, like some of the candidates don't exactly support the parking they buy, but I think I'm, that, like, with, while we do the internet, I think it's okay. It's okay, it's not like we don't. Some of the other candidates I really do not trust taking the world will handle transit at all. Um, Brad Bradford, um, Brad Bradford and Emma Lau, they are um, quite uh, spineless to me. They, yeah. and Anna says she keeps, like, her you know, track record, she keeps funding. She says she'll do things and she does not find that those things, she does not carry out her promises. All right, and uh, Mark Saunders, not a good guy to fund transit. We voted for the service cuts. We personally think Olivia and, and Josh have best plans, and um, and uh, Mark and uh, uh, Brad in particular. Yeah, especially red flags. Yeah. Stay vigilant. Be vigilant, my fellow reunion with union members. since early April. I've obviously only watched one of them, and that was on May 31st. I can't recall if transit was discussed then. Would someone here, and that could include you, or, sorry, I forgot your names. Uh, did Anthony and or Mark, at the very least, challenge any statements made by Olivia and or Josh in any past debate vis-a-vis -vis funding transit? And did Mark and or Anthony and or Brad defend their decisions or their reasons for not restoring the cuts in any past debate? I, of course, don't know if anybody from TTC Rogers thoroughly examined. Because obviously, just going by the survey isn't enough. Obviously, like going by past responses and past debates is necessary. Charles, great question. Maybe the moderators can answer. Uh, not now. We're going to hear from other folks in line, but when you speak next. So I think we have time for about three more comments. Uh, so let's hear from William first. Uh, yeah, so I'll also just talk more about also what our table talked about. We talked also about other revenue tools the city could maybe get to try to fund the TTC's operating budget. Um, and one of the things was the discussion about low emission zone that Aiden brought up at our table and also congestion pricing. And what's interesting about these two ideas is that they're actually in Transform TO, which is the city's actual um, low like, emissions reduction strategy. And I think one thing to really look about at all the candidates is to see whether or not they'll fund Transform TO or make a commitment to Transform TO. Because Transform TO in it itself has a lot of like different revenue tools that can really help fund the TTC and that have already sort of been costed, looked at, and studied by city staff. Uh, I just wanted to report back on one thought that we had at our table, which was that Anthony Furry uh, was against parking in levies uh, because it would negatively impact regular people as if transit users were not regular people, and I'm pretty sure all of us are regular people. Yeah. So I just wanted to make that, you know, show that. And Part of the 
the conversation because uh, most PTC riders use buses, but we just see the subways and the streetcars. Uh, they are the ones that are used by low income riders and uh, having one, uh, two buses on the 19th and 20th minute is not the same as having one bus every 10 minutes. I don't know why but I spend a lot of time waiting for buses and then uh, two at a time. So that's something that no one has talked about till now about service efficiency because even with the cuts I could have lived if there was efficiency but without efficiency I guess become terrible. So that's something I want to talk about. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jerry. And thank you everyone for listening. It's so hard to collect your thoughts in 60 seconds. Thanks for respecting the time limit so we can move on. But to Gary's point about bunching of buses and buses not being on schedule and costing us even more time, I wanted to point out one of our survey questions is, will you initiate a leadership review at the TTC? That's a question yeah. we ask because we know that the service is not being managed that when service cuts were on the table, counselors asked TTC staff, what are the service cuts? We never got an answer, and we did a Freedom of Information request that showed the information was available. So that's sort of a transparency and accountability question, but yeah, good point about bunching. Okay, we're right on time. Back over to the moderators about our next topic. Thank you, Sheila, and thanks for everyone who uh, came up and spoke. I know it can be a little bit, not nerve-wracking, but it's hard uh, to get your voice out there. It's kind of the platform we're trying to provide right now. So we are going to move on to our second uh, topic of the night, which is transit safety. Uh, first of all, I hope everyone can, I'm not blocking the view for it. I'm pretty short, or I should say built close to the ground for speed and accuracy, so I think you probably can still see. So, Safety is obviously an issue that's pretty top of mind for everyone right now. Uh, it's, it's important, it's also quite controversial, especially some of the responses that mayoral candidates have put forward. So, uh, obviously a lot of these candidates have diverging views, so we want to make sure we get to discuss that uh, today. So, just like the previous topic, we're going to give you a rundown of the TTC writers thinks kind of as an organization, and also uh, touch on two of our questions on the survey. Uh, so you can see what the Nora candidates are saying about safety. As always, check out the full survey, or the full uh, scorecard, because it's a lot more detail on there than what I can give you uh, right now. So starting in 2020, just after the pandemic, the TDC has seen a, a, an honest increase uh, in offenses against passengers. So currently the rate of recorded offenses against passengers is 1.7 offenses per million mornings. This is a significant increase above the normal rate of one offense per million mortgages. So it is important though to stress, and I think everyone in this room probably agrees with me on this, that the TTC is still safer than many other ways of getting around the city, particularly driving. Uh, however, the high profile violent incidents still have garnered a lot of attention. They've made a lot of us feel unsafe uh, riding transit compared to free men. I do acknowledge that the irony of white guy getting up here talking about transit safety, but it is also just important to point out that these are affecting uh, transit riders. So, can we move on to the next slide? Thank you. So, a few months ago, uh, it feels like a much longer, as it was snowy and dark at the time, uh, TDC riders collaborated with a number of other community organizations. We hosted a safety town hall with said organization, and we used what we heard to put together a safety report so we want to highlight the recommendations stemming from that report right now. So I think it's very important to stress that these recommendations are just that, and they came from a collaborative process. They weren't TTC riders simply commanding uh, the conversation. So first and foremost, we need the TTC to commit to, a, to create a safety round table. This round table should develop long-term sustainable solutions. The powers that be do seem to be flailing around as each incident happens and we need this round table to, again, discuss those long-term solutions. So the round table, ideally, will include members of marginalized groups such as women, non-binary folks, 2S LGBTQIA plus people, black folks, indigenous people, people of color, unhoused people, drug users, people with disabilities, youth, but also transit riders in general, and transit workers who often get left out of the conversation. We also need non-police responses to crisis. We know that many people feel unsafe around police and 
racialized people are often subject to disproportionate enforcement of police violence. Police are often also just ineffective in handling incidents uh, with people in crisis. We need to expand the housing supports, including affordable and rent geared to income housing. Non congregate shelter space is in a moratorium on encampment evictions. Finally, and I think most importantly, we need a fully funded and supported TTC. And this means no service cuts and adequate staffing in stations and ideally on vehicles as well. So, obviously, many of these factors are outside the jurisdiction of the TTC, but it's very important that we discuss safety in the wider context because of this. This is our call for the round table. So, we can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so. We have actually four major questions on the scorecard related to housing, staffing, the round table, and fair enforcement. In regards to housing, I'm actually just going to read you the question very quickly right now. So we asked mayoral candidates, and here are their answers. See, we asked mayoral candidates if they're going to commit to a long-term safety strategy that keeps shelter hotels open, expands non-congregate shelter spaces, adds in a moratorium on encampment evictions, collaborates with other levels of government to build affordable housing, particularly rent beer to income and other types of non project housing. So you can see candidate answers there. I don't need to run through this in particular, but I think one thing that's important to show you is how their responses do add up or match up with our red flags we felt we put on here for you. The second question I want, we want to highlight today in the next slide is ending fair enforcement. So fair enforcement, as we know, is obviously very controversial. Um, but prior to the pandemic, when fair enforcement was in force, is that a pun? When fair enforcement was in force, uh, we know that incidents of, of violence against racialized people, unhoused people, were often seen from uh, fair enforcement officers. So we asked mayoral candidates if they will end the TDC's harmful or relatively ineffective uh, fair enforcement program on the TDC. Again, you can see their responses there. Uh, but again, they do add up or match up somewhat with the, the red flag candidates. It's no surprise that the candidates who don't want to fund transit are also the ones who want to securitize transit and kind of police their way out of uh, social problems in the city. So with all this being said, uh, it is important to highlight the alarming platform to a few candidates like Mark Saunders, Brad Bradford, Anthony Fury. Again, they're, they're both mentioned down here. All of them plan on increasing security and police presence on the transit network. And we know this isn't an effective solution to addressing the root causes of safety and, quite frankly, villainizes folks who are most at risk. So that was a word salad for me. You probably don't want to uh, hear too much more from me right now. My job isn't to talk at you. What I do want to uh, tell you now is we're going to move on to the table discussion period. So just as before, uh, your facilitators are going to guide you uh, in these discussions. We'll have about 10 minutes. We'll come back to the, uh, the open debate at the end. Uh, so just a quick point to add on. We had Charles ask a question and we really did want to answer it. So we did some digging in the background. Um, and so Brad Bradford during the debates has been uh, targeting Olivia Chow's uh, uh, property tax increases quite a bit. So he says a 20% number and 9.9% .9 of that number is directly attributed to uh, transit improvements. I will note that 1.2% um, of that comes from the province doesn't fund the uh, SRT busway. 5% comes from service improvements beyond restoring service, which is just a number. And another 5% of that 20% number is made up. It's just like a, in case of future property tax increases. And um, Mark Saunders also said 25%, which is just another 5% added on top of Brad Bradford's number for good measure. But yeah, it's, there's been a lot of talk about transit and how much it would cost. But I mean, our stance as an organization is that we really do need those service cuts first. I just wanted to answer your question. Well, yes, yeah, so we'll move on to the table discussions now. Thank you, Chloe. Okay, you can start your table discussions now. Let's see how long they're promoting it in Edmonton and Kingston and Ottawa and elsewhere. So uh, it's the time you know and love. Uh, just as before, we are going to first have two tables respond at the mic over where Sheila is for 60 seconds. This is going to be exactly the same format as uh, funding the TTC. 
I'm going to pick on uh, two tables and choose a sacrifice. That sacrifice goes and gets sacrificed at the mic. And then we're going to have some time for uh, anyone to come and respond to this very important topic. So, picking a table. I'm going to choose you guys right there in the center. Sophia, that's, that's your table. I'm not picking on everyone. I, I love you all. Equally and without boundary. Like, I mean, if you think about it, if there's a, I 
hypothetically, the person unfortunately gets assaulted in a park, it's not a parks and recreational issue. Uh, similarly, if a person is getting assaulted on a TDC, it's not a TDC issue, it's a city crime issue. Right? The place where the crime is happening is the TDC. I think Toronto has a crime problem, Toronto has a, a problem with people who can be radically. There is perfectly great sense in bringing more staff in, increasing service and all that stuff, but I think there is also a problem of people assuming that crime happening on the TDC is a TDC problem, it's a Toronto City problem. Thank you. Hi, so first off, uh, thank you for this like, it's not honestly amazing. So, uh, when we talk about like, you know, the safety on the TTC, we actually kind of like, we'll have like, a great broad discussion from like, you know, uh, from the next station, kind of being near the, uh, the safety protection site as well, and kind of talked about like, the homeless situation. But we also talked about the media reflecting violence on TTC. And uh, we actually seen that there's a lot more negative articles towards like, violence on TTC as well. Uh, let's say like, you know, just like all these incidents as well, because like, but what about like car accidents or like kind of road rages that uh, happen on the uh, in, in the city itself? Like you know, Toronto's very like car centric, and we kind of like wondering like why is it, are we talking about like the TTC being very negative? Because like keep in mind like you know all these instances are very rare, but as opposed to like you know uh, car accidents and all stuff like that, they're a lot more they're a lot more common. I like, think so. I feel like it's a little bit of a media problem as well when thinking about violence on TTC because. I feel like it's a lot better than what you uh, see today. Also, Don Vermeer as well. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, free transit for people under 18. <laughs> the Don <Dalton> Show. <laughs> hey, Sheila, I think you're somebody over here who wanted to speak. Two speakers, and then we're going to bring the mic over, and I think that's all the time. Okay. So two speakers, and then we'll bring the mic over. There can't be staff or police everywhere, like right place, right time for safety concerns. So having something like cellular service on the subway where you can contact people who you need, or even if you're like in a situation where you're kind of getting harassed, you can just like be on your phone and like pretend that there's someone there just kind of monitoring the situation. You are growing up and having experience with that. Um, but also balancing with that, like being on a bus and where everyone else is on their phone and you're not creating that sense of community and also like having that sense of community on bus basis can also uh, create um, safe space because you're having like eyes on the bus and what's going on because that's also an issue to balance. So that is also what we talked about. Anyone heard of Family of Services? Yes. 
Now I'm going to turn things over to Chloe for our speed round debate. Thank you very much, Phil Simmons. Okay, so in this little discussion blitz that we have, we're going to be talking about a lot of issues here, including wheelchairs at the West. So Jennifer, we will get to talk more about that issue if that's important to you. So, uh, we'll first do a quick overview of topics that we think are worthy of discussion, but you're also welcome to talk freely within your uh, table about transit topics that are important to you, whatever that issue might be. For example, my important topic is the Eglinton Crosstown. I live on Eglinton, so I get woken up by Metrolink, so it's 7 a.m. in the very morning. Um, but yeah, okay, so our first one is about the Scarborough RT shutdown. Show of hands, anybody here from Scarborough? Amazing, Scarborough represents. Okay, so you're probably very, very aware of the unfortunate fact that the SRT is shutting down this November. The line is on its last legs, but unfortunately, due to political inaction, its replacement, the line to extension, will not be complete until 2030 at the earliest. Riders could be stuck in on street shuttle buses for the next seven years. The alternative, of course, is an express busway that could be uh, that could occupy the same space, the same right of way as the current SRT tracks, and that could open as soon as the next two years. However, the province has yet to commit funding for it. So we ask candidates: If the province does not fund the SRT busway, would you pay for its construction? And a variety of responses here. And so for the next slide. We really want to talk about affordability, and um, Toronto is increasingly becoming quite the unaffordable city, and the TTC really is no different. We need to maintain and expand the TTC uh, Fair Pass program for low-income people. So the Fair Pass for discount program, uh, when you apply, you get a single fare for 210, and a monthly pass for 123.25. Uh, City Council did approve this in 2016, but the program is not fully funded, so it's currently in its first stage and has yet to move into uh, later stages such as uh, low-wage workers. So we really do need the expanded Fair Pass program. And as we can see in the next slide, we asked the mayoral candidates, will you work towards transform TO's goal of fair free transit by allocating funding for the Fair Pass in your term as mayor and expanding free transit to people who receive social assistance, high school students, and on extreme weather alert days. And as we can see, again, a variety of responses, including no answers from Brad Bradford and Anna Vila, their silent speak volumes. Okay, uh, rapid TO is a topic that has come up before, and we will discuss it again. So, um, Toronto has a plan to prioritize buses and streetcars so they don't get stuck in traffic. 
It's fun to call rapid tail. It's a very good idea. It's quick, it's cheap, and it is shown to be very effective in increasing reliability and uh, decreasing commute times and travel times and transit vehicles. And so this plan is currently in place on uh, Eglinton Avenue East in Scarborough. Um, so there's that, but there's, there's a lot of other streets in Toronto that can really use rapid TO and are currently being studied. But due to an action from council, this plan is moving very, very slowly. For example, the Jane Street bus. Uh, bus lane is del delayed by over two years. Or if anyone's ever been on the 29 Dufferin bus, the Suffern Dufferin, you understand the pain. Okay, so we should move on. Uh, would you implement a minimum of 10 bus and streetcar priority quarters per the Rapid Geo plan during your term as mayor? And again, a variety of responses, including some clearly um, pro car, anti transit candidates here. And we're going to talk about accessibility and wheel trans. So, wheel trans really is a vital lifeline for its users, providing access and freedom for many who are otherwise unable to use the conventional system. But in a bid to cut costs, the TTC is aiming to move about 50% of current users to a conditional model where they would lose door-to-door -door wheel trans access. This is being done through a reassessment process which lacks transparency and can be difficult to navigate. We need the province to fund paratransit and we need the next year to fight to keep wheel trans service for those who need it. And we did put out a report um, a few weeks ago at Queen's Park detailing all of this including um, a story from Jennifer in the report, so we all encourage you to read it on our website. So, we're going to go over uh, each of the candidate transit platforms very quickly, just to see um, some of the ideas that we haven't touched on yet. So, uh, Anna Bailao has proposed a $2 SRT shuttle bus fares for the duration of construction. Brad Bradford says he wants to do a King Street uh, streetcar corridor, someone, someone tell them that already exists. Uh, so, um, Olivia Chow really wants to increase the presence of TTC employees and build the Eglinton East LRT, the SRT busway. Um, so, Anthony Fury, as we discussed, wants to end the Rapid TO program and increase security presence on the TTC, so more cops on transit. Uh, Mincy Hunter is advocating for a line four extension uh, east to Shepherd and McCowan and potentially west to Shepherd West. Uh, Mark Saunders really based on boosting security presence on transit. And um, for Josh Matlow, building the Hamilton East LRT, Waterfront East LRT, Shepherd East LRT, which is part of the Hamilton East LRT and the um, SRT busway. Okay, so we're going, to, just as last time, we're going to move into a discussion blitz. Um, so, same thing as last time, and all these topics that we touched on, you can talk about, or talk about the transit issues that are important to you. <coughs> but before you leave, I want to remind you, you can fill them out and actually put them in the boxes that are on your table. Or we also have a box at the exit as well. Discussions, but we're going we're gonna to keep things moving along. So just like the other two uh, segments, we are going to first call on two random tables to report back about your discussions. And then we're going to have some open mic time, probably for around five minutes or so. Uh, well, let's start with the table. So I'm trying to see who I have not called on. I do not believe I've called on this table. Right at the back, Rodney's table. <laughs> Don't be afraid, we're a nice group. Most of them. Not me. Test, test. Um, yeah, I think the thing that we were talking about at our table was 
basically the buses versus streetcars in terms of who moves more people faster and as well as like perception of speeds and that often being on a streetcar feels like it's moving slower uh, than being on a bus uh, and just generally about the importance of, of prioritizing those bus and those streetcar lanes um, as kind of a no-brainer idea. Um, another thing was just in improving the stops in general, making sure that there's shelters and benches and next train or bus arrival things at each stop. I think it's a really helpful wayfinding thing to get more people on the system. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that was kind of some main ones we touched on. Amazing. Yes, we're all fans of transit priority here. I don't believe, well, some of these tables are going to get left out. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. Uh, I don't think I'd call on this table right on the end here. You guys are on the far left, or far right table. Who is the sacrifice? So we know who not to vote for based on the survey, right everyone? Uh, so now we're going to have, again, five minutes, maybe a little bit more, to give you guys a chance to just come to the mic and, and, and give us your opinions on what people talk about, what you're feeling about the election, transit, anything like that. This is a bit of an open mic time. Uh, you can focus on those topics in the last section you want as well. And just line up at the mic and Sheila will control it. Wow, this is fun. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, the main thing I want to touch up on is uh, talking about a lot of the capital expenditures that the TTC is planning to go through and all the mayors are supporting over the next uh, several years. The one I'd like to talk about is the Edmonds and East LRT. Now, this might be my opinion, but it's worth having a discussion about how much money we're spending on this thing versus how much benefit we're getting from it. Right? It's a $4 billion project that will not improve speeds that will slightly improve capacity and will also serve areas served by other projects like Go Expansion, Drum Scarborough, ERT, and Line 2. Maybe there are six mayors that support building this project, so maybe there's some discussion about whether we should divert some of those funds to either build more bus lanes and more rapid to make something that I think most of us agree is a good thing, versus also improving some of the uh, operations, like having more frequent bus services, Operating existing streetcar lines to make them faster. But four billion dollars is a lot of money, right? That's a lot of money that we can make actually improving many of these corridors rather than simple capacity increases, right? One minute exactly. Thank you. So adding to what was just discussed, I see that obsessive looking at the so the current blitz, we went through accessibility is a really important topic in the discussions over transit. Like everything's connected to accessibility, the number of buses, dedicated lanes, the planned stop or busing expansion, the uh, bus fares, like the ways the accessibility for disabled people. I say that like Exactly what they said, that we have $4 billion, we can easily use this to like make transit accessible for everyone rather than, uh, rather than try to go through this idea of privatizing the entire transit network or having like private companies build subway stations. We should rather make transit as public and accessible as possible. As possible. Thank you. I'm, I'm really impressed with everyone sticking under the minute. Good job. Yeah, and building off of accessibility, even though I'm a new body person, I think it's so important to talk about accessibility and transit, but especially the fair fare program and how like garbage it was implemented in its first phase, how it was so inaccessible to people in my community, for example. I work at in a nonprofit in my community, and those who didn't have access to a computer couldn't actually access the fair fare program. And and people were like, no one's getting on the fair fare program. That's because no one was able to sign up for it. 
um, people on uh, Ontario Works, ODSP, were able to access this very critical service. And I think making sure that we can make fares accessible and affordable for everyone is so important and not a lot of people are talking about it. Because again, the fair fare program, we've already sort of talked about it, staff have already recommended it, and it's just something that's just in like, I don't know, like in the air that we should be actually talking about and funding. Because people in many communities need access to affordable fare.
you have to do so much paperwork, you have to give so much information that's tied to your Presto card. So I feel like it's like unfair because you're getting all this information you just because you're just trying to get around and it's ridiculous. So uh, I have issues with that. And then just to my final thing I want to say, uh, I volunteered for the Good Challenge 2014. I have a long winded story of why I voted for the first state event polls, but uh, anyway, you can come and talk to me and I can tell you the story of why I'm going to power our session. I think that as a policy decision, they should consider buses to be rapid transit. Um, they, they can pass each other, they, they can uh, go past many stops, but still have to stop because they have fewer people on them, so that they don't um, need to stop at every stop, but they can still serve the stop if people need them. So they travel much faster than streetcars and LRTs, and I think it was a mistake to consider streetcars and LRTs a step up from buses. I, should, I think we should understand that the buses can pass each other, they can travel more quickly, they can serve more stops, and they actually are rapid transit. And we should just think of them that way. And in most cases, all you really need is an HOV lane to help it along a bit. And even without that, they're still one of the fastest forms of transit. And we should just really think of buses as the solution that they should be buying hundreds more buses. Now, 
Uh, we do have this space until 8.30 p.m. Uh, our volunteers are going to be cleaning up, but you can stay and talk. Hopefully you've met some new friends at our passionate transit stand. So stay and talk until 8.30, and then we will have to say goodbye. But again, just from myself and from Chloe, thank you for, for coming.